Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we used a query parameter to pass in a value to the action class and uh, we used this query parameter and value and uh, we created a property for the action and we learned that there are interceptors that actually get that value and populate this property of the action which is there in the value stack so that we have it available and we don't have to worry about getting the property it's automatically copied and made ready for us so this is one of the ways in which we can pass values to a http request this is the get there is another way we can do it which is the post so we'll try take a look at how we can do the same thing with post and uh, we're going to look at another approach uh, which is actually preferred when you're working with starts to applications okay so here is a get request we have a query parameter which is obviously a get and we have learned that the interceptor is going to take this value and populate the corresponding property in the action class but what's going to happen if we do a post request uh, does the interceptor check for that as well or do we have to do something else let's try that out so I'm going to create a new JSP I'll create a new JSP file and then I'll call this search form dot JSP and finish so this is going to be our search page which will have a text box instead of having a a query parameter I'm gonna have a text box and then a submit button and the user can enter the language that they want to search tutorials for and then hit submit so this will be a new form here and um, I have some HTML over here for the language and the submit so the form I'm gonna make method as post so that it's not the default get and the action okay now here's the thing the action could be the URL of the action that we have which is this one tutorials and get tutorial dot action so let me just copy this and see how it works All right, so I have a form which is doing a post to the action which we are interested in. Of course, we here we tried to do a get, but now we are trying to do the post for the same action. So I enter the same URL over here for the action. And then I have one input text which has the language as the name. And then we have a submit button. Okay, now let's save and run this we'll see what's gonna happen so I will change this to a search form .jsp. okay for some reason the text box is showing up as black here so let me just open this in a browser okay so I'm gonna enter this in a browser and okay so here we have a text box and a submit button so if I enter Java over here and press submit it's gonna to go to Java brains and if it's anything else it's gonna say language not supported it so as you can see the value is going in right so the Java value is being picked up properly it is actually populating the action class the member variable of the action class with the right value so irrespective of whether it is a get or a post the interceptor is going to intelligently detect that the parameter that's being passed has the same value as the member variable over here and it's going to populate it so this is one advantage you don't have to worry about a get request or a post request as long as the parameter matches the member variable of the action class you're all set it's going to automatically copy the value by default okay so having said that take a look at this search form this form here is pure HTML so you have a form tag and uh, that has a method and an action you have two inputs one for a text box and one for a button and then we are closing the form tag so this this form 
is pure HTML. And this works. We've just tried this out and we know that it works as long as it's a post request. It doesn't really matter where that request is coming from. It could be a HTML uh, page that triggers the request. But the thing is, Struts2 provides some tags that you can use for generating this content. And uh, as long as you're using a Struts2 application anyway, unless there's a very good reason, you should try to implement the Struts2 tags because one, they make it a bit easier. And then secondly, they have some extra features that, that do come in handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and I'll replace this with a Struts2 form. So they are Struts2 tags that are equivalent to the tags that you see over here. So there is a Struts2 tag equivalent to the form. There is a Struts2 tag that's equivalent to a text box input over here. And then there is an equivalent Struts2 tag for a submit. So we'll replace that and we'll see that that works as well. And um, it actually is simpler to link to actions if you're using the struts2 tag. So let's let's try that out now. So the first thing that I need to do in order to use struts2 tags is of course to add the tag lib. So I'll add that first. I have that copy pasted, I'll just paste it here. So I'm declaring a tag lib with the prefix of s and this is for the struts tags. So now that I've declared this tag lib, I can do a s colon and then Eclipse is gonna give me a list of suggestions. So I'll do a s colon and then there is a s colon form. So I'll use this. So s colon form has only one attribute that it requires. I'll do a control space so that it gives the list of possible attributes. And now here I will choose the action. So this is what is required. Now notice what it says here. It says set the action name to submit to without the dot action suffix. So this is one of the advantages. You don't have to type in a dot action suffix because this is a struts form after all. So it knows your struts configuration. So all I need to do is choose this action and then I'll take this. It has to have the namespace as well. So I'll add the namespace, but I do not use the dot action it's because it's really redundant. We don't have to do it because struts already knows what your extension is, it'll intelligently figure it out. So this is all I need to do as a definition of my struts form. So I'm just specifying the action without the dot action. Okay, so now the form is done. Now I need to add the text box. So the equivalent for the text box is s colon text field. So this text field generates a text box and uh, it there's one other interesting trick over here so let me just type this out and I'll show you this text field requires something called as a key now, the key is the property that you want to assign this value to so in your action whatever property you want the value to get populated to that property is going to be your key. So you have to put the name of the member variable in your action that you want this value to get populated to. So we'll leave it at that and I'll just come back to this once I show you the HTML that I was talking about. Okay, so text field is done. This line alone generates a text box and it also knows that this is the value that it needs to populate to. And now I need to add the submit button. So the submit is s colon submit. There you go. And this is it. So this is, if you compare, you can obviously see that this is a much simpler version of the form uh, when, even when you compare it to this HTML form. And uh, since we are using struts anyway, it's always a good thing to have this. Uh, the only reason why you would not want to use this is if you are not allowed to use struts to tags for some reason, or you want this page to be a HTML, in which case a HTML form is ideal. But as long as you're using JSPs and you're using struts to tags, it's always better to use a struts form. Okay, so let me remove this set of HTML tags. So now we know that our 
JSP has only struts tags for generating the form. So I'll save this and let's try accessing this page again. Okay, so I'll paste this URL. And you notice here right away, there is one difference. There is a label and then there is a colon and then you have the text box. So it was a plain text box earlier. Now you actually have a label. And the label happens to be the key that you have entered in your start stack. So we'll take a look at what the HTML is, but let's just make sure that this continues to work fine. So I'll add, I'll enter Java and hit submit. Okay, it comes to Java Brains, so this is working fine. So the language property is getting populated with the text box value that I've entered here. But okay, now let's take a look at this label. And uh, in fact, let's do a view source. So you see here, it's actually generating the HTML form, obviously, because it has to go uh, get rendered in the browser. So the ID is get tutorial, name is get tutorial, and the action is tutorials slash get tutorial. It is doing a post by default. And uh, you notice here, so this is where it's actually generating the text box. So it's generated a label over here and it has generated the text box as usual with the input type equals text and name equals language. So there are a few other things. It's generating an ID over here, but we don't really worry about that at this point of time. And of course, there is input type equals submit, which is required for the submit. So essentially what it's doing is it is almost uh, the same HTML that we had typed. There are a few extra additions, but for uh, as far as the functionality is concerned, it is the same HTML, but it is doing all these things behind the scenes. It has created a label for us, and it has created a text box along with the submit button. So now this is not really an ideal label. Uh, you know, in a real world application, you wouldn't want to actually display the name of the property of your action. You might have something else and you want to display something else to the user. So in that case, what we can do is in our text field tag, you have something called as a label property. So I can add any label I want here, enter the language you want to search for. Okay, so I'm not going to add the colon here, it's just going to be the text, the save and let me reload the page so there you go it has entered it has displayed the entire label along with the additional colon and you can also see that the form has been aligned properly so the text box is moved the submit button has moved so it all looks good you don't have to worry about alignment starts to tags takes care of all that and uh, it also gives you the label that you want so you don't actually display the property name over here so this is let, let's uh, do a view source again so this is uh, actual html like we saw and uh, there are some things that it does in order to track internally it's actually creating a table in order to do all this alignment and uh, it has this name action underscore property name that it is used in a couple of places over here so you see here the id of the text box is action underscore property name so and even here it is uh, the action underscore zero so you don't have to worry about all this know that it's generating html for you and uh, it, it does all these other additional things which justifies using struts tags uh, before i wind up there's one thing that i want to point uh, your attention to and i don't know if you already noticed you notice the action over here the action is tutorials slash get tutorial. There is no dot action over here, and you must be wondering why. Uh, we will cover this in a little bit more detail in a subsequent tutorial, but what's interesting to know is, let me take you back to Eclipse. Okay, so you see here, um, let's open this get tutorial dot action. So, this is the URL that we had used earlier. We are directly calling the action URL and we are passing a get parameter, correct? So notice what happens if I remove this dot action. 
I'm removing this and I'm just using git tutorial. I don't have a dot action suffix. It still works. It's still showing Java brains. So this is something we'll cover in a subsequent tutorial, but I just wanted to point that out. And uh, you know, if you're curious, you can explore and see why this is happening. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.